Welcome back to another episode of The Loco Fit Show, where we redefine what healthy means to you. I'm your host, Lauren Conlon, and today I'm joined by Rick, our team mental health counselor, to cover quite a tough situation. So mm-hmm. this is very specific, but I do think that there is probably many people who have fallen into this category, or at least thought about this, and it is, do we call off the wedding? So I'm going to read this situation, but yeah, this is a really tough one. I've been in a relationship for four years, and we've been engaged for one year. Recently, I started my own personal growth journey, and I've begun to realize things about him and the relationship. I'm considering leaving, but the external views and judgment are hard, especially since we are planning a wedding. He's very low-key set in his ways and not into fitness or anything. He is a homebody and basically the complete opposite of me. He doesn't support my bodybuilding. I feel like I need a cheerleader, someone on my side, adventurous, ambitious, which he is not. He's okay being average in an okay job and just sitting on the couch. The issue is I've dated guys who are similar to me, confident and cocky, and that didn't end well. I'm super stuck if I should see if he can grow or just end the relationship before we get married and then potentially get divorced later. Whew. All right. Well, calling off a wedding is certainly a challenge no matter what, and especially in this situation where you feel like maybe you guys are not as compatible as maybe you thought. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll just start off by saying that There's never a good time to realize these things, right? Like, obviously, it probably would have been better to realize Mm pre-engagement, but there's never really a good time because it's always going to be hurtful to both parties, right? You think, okay, I'm going to be with this person, and then you end up in a situation, you know, where you realize things and you're not. So regardless, this is going to be tough whether they're planning the wedding or not, but it Mm -hmm. does definitely add a layer, not just of judgment, and of course, people are going to judge no matter what, even if you weren't planning the wedding people would judge regardless Mm -hmm. but it does just add an extra layer of man should we make this work because it has been working for four years Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. right so this is definitely a tough one and i'm sure like i said this is a specific situation but i'm this is not the only time somebody's felt like this whether it's an engagement or you know prepping for the wedding or just realizing things in a serious relationship Mm -hmm. that maybe we're just not on the same page anymore and kind of like what to do with that yeah like when to break up when not to yeah um is the key. So let me steal this question from you okay. again. Because there's, um, again, there's a lot here for it's both a lot of, of layers to start to work through. Number one, what I will say is this. Sometimes, and I agree with you, there's never a good time to recognize these things. And where and when that happens, we don't have control over that. What I will say, though, is sometimes the external events create the pressure we need to actually address these things. So maybe for the last like three years, she was complacent and just kind of sitting still in the relationship and the wedding is happening. They're moving forward with it. And now the pressure of the wedding is what's created the opportunity for this person to sit back and start to think about and analyze like, oh my God, wedding actually means forever. And is this really what I want versus had this person never proposed they might still be in that same space and not feel the pressure. You know, this is kind of like, there's a lot of different things that can happen in relationships where, you know, two people might start dating each other and be like, yeah, you know, I want kids. Well, I'm not really sure how, if I do or if I don't, right? And then all of a sudden we get several years down the road and one person's like, hey, I really want to start talking about having children. And the other person's like, well, because this conversation is happening now, it's forcing me to actually think about whether or not I want this and I don't or I do. And so that the event can create the pressure we need sometimes to think about things that otherwise have just been kind of laying dormant and we've been not necessarily ignoring them, but just not giving it the attention that it needs. So her even recognizing the the magnitude of it Mm because you're like, Oh, everything's fine. And then one day you're just like, Whoa, this is not fine. And that's kind of how everything with like personal growth happens. Mm -hmm. I feel like like nobody, you don't just sit around and you're like, oh, I wonder, I wonder about this day. I mean, maybe you do. I, I do. But most people probably don't. But a lot of times the most, the most growth comes from just things that seemingly are just coming out of nowhere. Like, where is this shift coming from? Where is this thought coming mm-hmm. from? And then... Boom. It's there. It could be something that was... And, and you could be on either side of that coin. You could be the one pushing the new kind of agenda or the new whatever. And the other person is just kind of feeling like, well, this has never been a part of our relationship. And why is it now? And... So there's a lot of things. So um, I guess the first thing that I do want to say is her first response is to, do we call off the wedding? I would probably maybe say, maybe we need to postpone the wedding. Do we have to call it off entirely? Or is there a space for you guys to maybe say, okay, something's going on. I don't know what it is, or I do have some specific ideas of what might be causing some of these issues, but 
I'm not saying I don't want to get married, but what I am saying is, is I want to pause this for a minute so that we can work on some of the stuff and address some of the stuff and see if my feelings change or your feelings change before we take the extreme of necessarily calling off the wedding. You know, are you going to have difficult questions? Yes. Are people going to, you know, be in your business and wonder why? Sure. But what I would tell you is the difficulty in postponing or calling off the wedding now isn't going to be any more intense than going through a divorce and separating. When you have to make that decision, it's not as simple, especially if there's children involved, which we don't know if there are, but, um, you know, when you guys start joining assets and having, you know, your lives layered on top of each other, bank accounts, businesses, homes, um, other investments, other things that you guys have created or done together, it becomes messy. Um, and so I would tell you that the, sh- the, the pain and discomfort you're going to feel right now is probably not going to be as intense um, and as long lasting as the impact of a divorce will later on. And, you know, one of the other things that I would want to address is like right away in this, just in this question, she's considering divorce, like as a viable option. Like, do I keep my mouth shut and, and not address some of the issues that are in my relationship and just settle into a divorce later? Like, I don't know if that's the right mentality to go into for a marriage. Is, is that what we're really asking you to do? Is that what you're, how you're really framing this? Like, if these things don't change, we're just going to get a divorce. Like, it's not an easy decision. That's not a simple decision to make. And again, I would encourage this person. I would say, look, before we take any real drastic steps here, like addressing the relationship, first and foremost, is the fundamental component. The wedding and a divorce isn't something I would even really want to discuss until it's like, why aren't we addressing what's happening in this relationship now? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's the most important thing that I got from this is regardless mm-hmm. of if you go through with the wedding or you end up getting divorced, whatever it is, you need to recognize, okay, here is the issues that I'm having very clear cut. What do you know, and talking to the partner, what do you feel about this? Right? Like, here's where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Where are you? Do you see this as an issue? Do you not see this as an issue? Are you interested in working on this? Are you not? Because then that's going to be pretty clear if you present all of these things to your partner and they're like, well, I don't really care, but we should still get married. It's like, do you want to even get married then? Right? Like, like mm-hmm. what is the point of this? If like, there's all these problems, right? Like, and there could be the fact that these have not been articulated to that partner, right? To, Probably. And or could be, yeah. Could be an option. And we can't expect people to be mind readers. And I think a lot of times we do, right? We're like, we have all these feelings. So we think that other people should know how we're feeling, but we're not really expressing how we're feeling. And then we get disgruntled because they're not like picking up on that, but they just don't know. And she mentioned this, you know, the person's pretty low key. So like, maybe they're just kind of like, yeah, everything's good to go. Like they're just real laid back Mm -hmm. and they're maybe not recognizing these things. So it's your job. If you're the person who's having these thoughts to be like, Hey, here's kind of where I'm, here's where I'm at. Mm-hmm. Here's what I would like us to work on. Here's what is I'm willing to do. do. Here's what is unacceptable. Here's the, like lay it all out. And it's not going to be something that overnight the partner is just going to be like, okay. I mean, they might, but mm-hmm. the chances are they're probably going to be like, what? Especially this, the way this is laid out. Like, what, what do you mean? Everything's, I thought everything was great. Like, you don't like, the, like they maybe are not going to be as receptive right away. And for somebody who's real laid back, that might be the answer for somebody who's a little bit more high strung, they Mm. might kind of blow up or they might get very defensive and be like, no, I don't do that. Or I don't need to work on that or this, that, or everything's fine. So it's going to depend on the individual, but at some point they're either going to come around to that change and recognize, okay, this, we do need to do this. Or they're just, they're going to go into a marriage really unhappy as well. Like that's not really a viable solution for anybody. So I agree with you that probably postponing it It's probably a better idea instead of just saying like, we're calling this off. And this is the tough part because, you know, like we say, like there's usually never like an event, like there are some events that it's like, okay, we're going to break up. Like, Mm -hmm. but rarely is it that thing, right? And everybody's always looking for that thing. So when that's not there, it can be really hard for either party to really accept like, what do we need to do? Yeah. But I think it's important to just actually be able to lay out, Hey, here's what I'm feeling. Here's what we need to work on. Mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable starting a life together if if we're not going to be able to work through these things. And it sounds like from the description that they're very different people. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing. Sometimes you actually need that person, right? If Mm -hmm. you're like one way, very extreme, like it probably is helpful that you have somebody 
who balances you out mm-hmm. to a degree, right? right? Like if it's a total mismatch, then that's going to be really hard, right? Mm-hmm. Like if somebody has like a lot of energy and always wants to be going and doing things, like it sounds like this person does and their partner doesn't. Okay. Well, is your, is, is he okay with you going and doing those things? Mm-hmm. That's a very different story than if he's like, I don't want to do anything, but you can't go do that. Okay. Well, that's not going to work. Right. But if he's like, no, I'm, I'm going to chill here. You go out with your friends, you go do this. You, Okay, well, that can work, mm-hmm. right? So it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you guys have to be exactly the same, but it means that within the parameters that you're different, you need to be able to figure out what is working here, what isn't, where are these needs not being met, right. and then really get to the root of that because I think that that's more of the issue right now. And for somebody who is pretty laid back and like low-key, they might just not even be realizing these things. Yeah, and I, you know, there's a lot that you just said that I that I agree with and and where some of that stuff is coming from because so one of the first things that when I read this person's question was I think this person talked about how where is it yeah okay I've dated guys who were similar to me confident and cocky and they didn't end well so one of one of the first things that came into my mind is this guy's kind of the antithesis he's kind of the opposite of that right so maybe she had on one end she was this person was dating extremes Mm -hmm. Sorry, I shouldn't assume um, that this person was dating extremes where they were more typically self-centered, cocky, arrogant, whatever. So that's one extreme. And if she had several relationships like that where she was sick of that, maybe part of the appeal for this other person is that he's the, this person's the exact opposite, right? And so it's like a reprieve. It's like, oh my God, this is a person who's sweet and kind. And so they've been together for four years, which is a good amount of time, but... What it might be is this person has settled into this and it's no, the, the, how do, what's the word I'm looking for? Like the novelty of the relationship is worn off, right? The novelty of the person being so kind of complacent Mm -hmm. and, and like, just like, oh, he's not a challenging person. He's not cocky. He's not Whereas before that was a positive attribute. Now it's maybe a negative. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm seeing is this is a person who's dating, who's dating history and I don't, I'm not trying to classify all of this person's relationships yeah, of within that. We're just going but it seems like it's, it's a little bit on extremes, right? Like on one hand, I've got coffee, confident and cocky. And on the other hand, I've got kind of complacent and, you know, almost meek to the point where he doesn't challenge. He's just very average. It's kind of how this person described it. Like they're okay just being average. And she wants a little bit more. And so to me, it's kind of like, all right, it's what we're talking about, right? To the degree that you mentioned. There's a balance. Can we find that balance? Is that person willing to address some of the issues that are happening in the relationship and come forward? And, you know, and there's also a difference too, I think, and this is where communication comes in, but say this person, the partner is good with just kind of having like a normal job and just being Mm -hmm. low key, like as described, right? I don't know the person, but this is how they're being described. Maybe that's what they want out of their life. Correct. But they are happy to support you. Mm Mm-hmm in all these different challenging endeavors that you want to do. Is that enough? Right? Because why do you have to have them be this person who is also super high achieving and doing all these things? Maybe they're just happy with where their life is, but they want to support you. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, she hasn't asked necessarily in that way. So it could just be like, Hey, this is just who I am, but I would love to support you doing these things. And so I think that that's another talking point that they need to figure out. You know, is it like, Is it somebody who's like, I'm good with being average and I want to bring you down to being average? Mm -hmm. Or it's like, hey, I'm good with my life and my work here, Mm -hmm. but I want to support whatever you want to do. So that's a different dynamic. And sometimes you don't know that if you don't ask. (laughs) Is that happening on both sides, right? Is she like Mm -hmm. getting up at five o'clock in the morning going like, hey, come to the gym with me. And he's like, no, I want to sleep. I want to do this. Um, You know, or is it vice versa? Is she getting up at five o'clock in the morning and he's being like, hey, stay in bed. Like, don't go to the Mm -hmm. gym. So you can see... The, the, the kind of polarization there. And I agree with you. One of the one of the first questions, one of the best questions to ask in any relationship, no matter who you are, is to ask the person, what can I do to support you? Like, what do you need from me? And here's the other part where you guys need to be able to answer that question. Tell them exactly, specifically, what they need to do to support you. People are not mind readers. It doesn't mean that because you've been in a relationship with somebody for four years, 10 years, 50 years, that you know this person inside now better than they know themselves. That isn't the case. If somebody's like, what can I do to support you? It is my responsibility to tell you specifically what I need you to do. Now it's your responsibility to do it. If it's not like totally ridiculous. Okay. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's set that expectation right now. Um, 
with the exception of like, you know, ludicrous requests, like you're telling the person what they need. Now they just need to do it. I'm or, not a mind reader. I don't want to play the guessing game. Or if they don't want to, then that is the, that's the answer, mm-hmm. right? If, if you say, if, hey, this is what I want. This is what I would like moving forward. Do we think that we can work together to get here? And you mm-hmm. can't expect that to be like an overnight thing. But hey, can we work to get here? And if the person's like flat out like, no, then there's the answer, right? Like that could also be it. So maybe this has just never been proposed. Like maybe mm-hmm. the question has never been presented. Right. And I think a lot of people get to that place. And it sounds like, you know, she's, uh, you know, hey, I'm doing this personal growth journey on my own. Maybe these weren't things that they had talked about before because maybe these were not things, questions they'd asked themselves. That's also mm-hmm. the case. And now it's like, oh, maybe I do want more. Maybe I want this to be different. And I never could articulate it before. So I definitely understand, um, but I think a big part of it is just like let's actually have this conversation and, yeah. and put actual like strategy behind this. Okay, this is what I want. This is what you want. Can I do this? Can you do that? Can we come to a middle ground here? Are you okay with this? Are you not like mm-hmm. just figuring those things out? Because I think a lot of people get in relationships and they don't do that early on because who kind of really wants to do that early on mm-hmm. and then and then you a few years later you're like oh shit we've never fa- we've kind of just been like doing this but now we're at like this turning point that's pretty important mm-hmm. especially in this case yeah. <laughs> and we need to figure out okay what are we doing like next right so yeah they're they're planning a wedding together right so on some level at some point they found themselves in a space where they were considering forever with each other and now this person's at a space where forever is very questionable um, and as to whether or not she even wants to be or this person wants to be in the relationship. Um, so, you know, I, I think something that's equally important in this is understanding the differences between chemistry and compatibility. Chemistry oftentimes is what people will, they use them kind of interchangeably, but they should, they're very different things, right? Chemistry is like, that potential initial attraction to somebody like we get along, maybe even we have similar, you know, ideas or certain things. It's, it's, it's a much more intense. It's like, you know, you hear it all the time. Like we have great chemistry together. We just get along, we connect, we vibe, right? But chemistry often will fade throughout the course of a relationship. And what replaces it is whether or not you're truly compatible with one another. And so compatibility is the elements of the relationship really that help enhance and bring the best out in you. And what I'm finding, at least in this question, the way the question is proposed, is that maybe they aren't the most compatible because he doesn't seem, at least from this person's perspective, the one partner is not bringing out the very best in the other. Or the other is asking this person to be like, hey, I want you to be more supportive. I want this to be a part of your life. Like a little bit more ambition is what I'm, these are all things that this person's asking for. And the other person maybe doesn't want to do those things. And so one of the things that kind of struck me about this is there's a, there's a, a value shift within the relationship. Okay. And their lifestyles don't seem to match up. Um, potentially goals are different. They have different expectations for the relationship. These are the values. This isn't about individual characteristics or the person's personality. This is about how we see the relationship, how we exist within it, what experiences we're going to take. There are some couples out there who are like, I want somebody who's in the health and fitness world. They don't have to be a competitor but I want the person to care about what they eat. I want the person to go to the gym and take care of their body. You know, they don't need to be walking around at 10% body fat, but like, let's be honest and just be like, you can manage this. Like, I, like the idea of going to the gym together is something, you know, I, I, the gym that I belong to, there's like several couples who make it, you see them because they come in together. They don't maybe do the same workouts, but they're there together. It's something that they're doing. It's a part of their life. It's part of their value system. And if this is a person who's really taken that shift and this is a person who's okay just kind of sitting on the couch and doing nothing, I can see that being an issue. But what does support look like? If support is get your gym shorts on and come to the gym with me, I can see where that might be problematic. If he can or if this other person can be like be more supportive of the person going to the gym or buy them some new clothing or... I don't know, pay for the gym membership or something like that or support them at a competition. or just, There's a lot of different ways that you can demonstrate support for somebody. Are those ways enough? So for me, one of the things that I'm hearing in this is there's a shift in the relationship of the value structure. The other thing is 
sometimes what makes these decisions hard, which talked about the pressures of making the decision to end the relationship or not the relationship, but to call off the wedding. And she talked about like kind of the pressures and the judgment that's going to come. First and foremost, I want to tell this person, you are 100% absolutely right. There is pressure. That pressure is real. The judgment you're going to face from your family, because you're going to get all kinds of stupid ass questions. If you were feeling this way, why did you say yes to the proposal? Why did you let it go this far? Fuck all of you. I don't care about any of that. Like, it doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. What matters is what you're feeling right now. And this is kind of a psychological concept that I want people, that I work with people to understand. Um, this is, these are based on like Jungian principles, Carl Jung, because one of the theories that he talks about is becoming a whole person. Integrating the aspects of your life, like shadow work is what people will refer to a lot. How do I integrate shadow material into my more conscious aware self? Well, what does all that actually mean? One of the most difficult aspects of being a human being sometimes is learning to accept, acknowledge, and recognize the parts of us that might be selfish, that might be slightly more deviant, that might be not acceptable to the rest of society. And so what happens is is we suppress these aspects of who we are into a deeper, darker place. And we're motivated by them unconsciously or subconsciously at some level. And if we never work to address what these aspects are, and oftentimes they're the parts of ourselves that are the less desirable parts of who we are, who we maybe don't even want to admit sometimes. And so the reality is, is we place judgment on ourselves for those things and we repress them. What the work actually entails is how do I take these things that I judge about myself and I move them more into a conscious space? And so I become a more whole person. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that I'm not only caring, loving, and supporting, but I'm also selfish, needy, and um, demanding at times. And now people can listen to that and be like, well, that's, those are all negative traits. Well, for you, I'd say negative is a judgment. And what I'm looking for is to help this person become more whole. Stop looking at you and your decisions as a way of right and wrong and versus what is best and healthy for me. What makes the most sense? What helps my life work in a healthier, more productive way for me? And so to me, it's about changing what the, the, the judgments are around the wedding and not allowing those judgments to impact you because you're going to look at them in terms of good or bad, you know, right or wrong, all this kind of stuff. And it's like, okay, if we were to remove the judgment and start to incorporate all the things you're asking about yourself and all the things you want from your partner, we get a very different picture of who the person is. And that's what I want, to be more authentic and honest with yourself. If you're able to do that, you'll know exactly what you want. You'll know exactly how to ask the person for support. And this is a fundamental important part. When you allow the judgments of other people to make decisions for you, you will be grossly unhappy with the outcomes of those decisions because you couldn't have been honest with yourself. Because part of you is accepting that judgment as right or wrong, good or bad. I don't want those judgments to exist. I want you to move away from that judgmental time frame and be like, okay, all the qualities of me are equal and have their space. I don't want to judge that aspect of it. Does that make sense? I realize that that might not have been what this person's looking for out of this. But as a, as a therapist, this is one of the things that I work at to help this person become more whole and say, okay, how can you be more honest and authentic in the relationship by admitting what you want and not allowing the judgment of everybody else to impact this decision. Because ultimately for the question that they're asking, the judgment, okay, so so there is going to be a lot of judgment, right? Mm-hmm. You're ending a an engagement, you're calling off this wedding. Say say this is what you end up doing. Or even if you postpone it, there's still going to be judgment with the Correct. postponement. Mm-hmm. But what is the other outcome? You end up going through with it when you don't really want to, and then you're going to be judged when you get a divorce and you're grossly unhappy in a year, two, five years, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Or now... Say you do end up sticking with it and now you're just this miserable person. And then the other, then then your partner is like, who is this? Like there's just so many other things that are, that can come out of this in a negative sense. And this is not to say that you should just be like, oh, I'm not feeling it right now. I'm going to call off the wedding. Like that's also maybe a quick judge. Like that's, that's not the best idea either, right? Like that's maybe a little rash and you know, probably shouldn't do that either. But if this is actually thoughtful, And we're like, hey, we're just maybe going to put a pause on this and really need to work through these things Mm -hmm. and really actually be able to articulate. And that could take time. Like, that's the thing. Like, these types of things take time to Mm -hmm. figure out. Like, you might have this intuition of what you want, but maybe you can't verbalize it. And you're like, all right, here's kind of how I've been feeling. Not really sure how to package it up, but like, let's just start to have these conversations. And then, 
over time, if you and your partner can come together, then great. Mm -hmm. And if not, then that's going to be better than getting married and then getting a divorce in a few years and having this awful fallout Mm -hmm. um, that could have been avoided. And so I think that it really is just about having that honest perspective with yourself and saying, okay, really, what are, what, what do I want? What do I need? Mm -hmm. Maybe I didn't know these things before and now I'm learning them because that's kind of what it sounds like. I wasn't maybe really sure about all this till I started to do this personal growth. Now I'm getting clear on what I want. Do you want to be this person with me? And if not, then we need to move separate ways. Right. I'm changing. I'm growing. And I would like you to grow in these ways or, or, or can you just not even necessarily, can you grow this way? Can you support this? Are mm-hmm. you interested in supporting this? Are you because I think a lot of times with partners we think like they need to be this perfect person for us who can do all these things and be like this sometimes we hold too high of a perception to what the other mm-hmm. person should be doing in the relationship, you know what I mean? And it's like the other person can't be everything for you. Right. You know, you need to be everything for yourself and then they can complement it. Mm-hmm. And we can't expect somebody to just like completely be a different person just for us because right. that's not fair for them either. All he could be excited and a high achiever and cocky and confident for a few weeks but if that's not him Mm -hmm. that's also not fair right Right. then he's going to become miserable and that's going to degenerate so yeah you could have like a fake facade of somebody who's this way but that's Mm -hmm. not really what you want either um so i think it does take time to develop this but it's okay and i would say that the judgment of calling off a wedding or postponing it or whatever it is is going to it's going to be hard, but it's going to be a lot less hard than the after effect of not dealing with these things head yeah. on. And sometimes life um, sucks and it gives you the option to choose between That's why you listen to our show, guys. one, <laughs> one terrible decision and one awful decision. Yeah. And it's like, well, which one do I choose, right? Take a cliche, the lesser of two evils, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes the right solution just doesn't... or, or, or or the perfect feel good solution either. doesn't exist. It's just like, okay, these are the options that I have. And so learning to, to live in that space and to just make the decision that's best for you, even if it's not great, because you're going to end up choosing your heart here. You're going to have to choose between two very difficult decisions. Do I stay and potentially face getting divorced later? That's going to be really, really hard. Do I call off the wedding? Really, really hard. Do I postpone the wedding? Really hard. Because all of this is going to require at some point having conversations to address this with that person. That's going to be hard. It is not easy, despite how we feel and the connections that we've had with people, to sit them down, especially when we're talking about things that are potentially going to shift and alter the relationship forever. Right? So if I'm saying to you, hey, things have been going well, or this is the first time you're hearing about it, and now I'm telling you that I'm unhappy, all of these things can create an instability that exists in the relationship where they don't know where they stand. But... Having the conversations now instead of later will serve you to see whether or not this person can adjust and make changes and satisfy this part of the relationship, or they can't, and then it becomes a little bit more clear about what you might need to do, which again, is still going to suck and be hard, because anybody who's ever ended a serious relationship knows it's not easy. It's not an overnight thing. Even if you make the decision one day... It's like there's so many residual impacts that come with it. It's just not, you know, a simple decision to make. Yeah. And unless you have like zero feelings, it's going to be, um, you know, it's not like you make this decision and then you wake up and you're like, oh, okay, good to go. I mean, there are probably some people who feel like that, but I would say that that is. I would venture that they disconnected a long time ago from the relationship. Yeah, exactly. Thing. That's like few and far between. Like basically what I'm saying is. Even if it might be the right decision, it's not going to feel great right away, most likely. Right. Um, and, that's, and that's worse. You know, yeah. Cause... And then you're like, wait, did I make the right decision? <laughs> but it's like, unless you like have zero empathy for somebody else, you're not just going to be like, oh yeah, I just broke somebody's heart. Like, mm, okay, mm, I'm yeah. fine. Like that's, that's not normal. You know what I mean? I mean, I there's agree. certainly people who do that. Um, and I but don't I'm sure think... we, would, we would label them as something. I don't think it's the people who are writing these questions no, because they no. care enough to like exactly. be exploring it personally <laughs> and hear other people's opinions. On yeah. When you it. just so... shut people out, that is not normal. And when you shut people out and don't feel anything about it. Correct. So basically, if, no matter what this ends up being, it's going to be a challenging situation. Yeah. So we hope for the best for you guys. Um, I don't know when that was sent in because it's all no, anonymous. I say, so I don't, I don't how know. How timely was this I have response. no idea because it doesn't say <laughs> when they're sent in. Yeah. Um, so this could be already passed. But in general, I think it was still a useful question for people because there are going to be other situations where people are discovering things and 
hey, are we compatible or we're not? Mm -hmm. So thank you guys so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please share it. This is the best way to support us. I will put the link below in the show notes. You can submit more questions for us to answer on the podcast. Uh, For more information about one-on-one coaching, visit teamlocofit.com and be sure to join our email list for great information and to be the first to hear about the app we'll be releasing in a few months.